Hey folks, Bob Reese here with the Guides Forecast, giving you a forecast for Sunday, the 8th of September. It was a busy day down here for Saturday. I think a lot of folks realized that the ocean south of Cape Falcon was going to be kind of volatile, so they took advantage of um, the good coho fishing here still happening on the lower Columbia River, and it was good today. Uh, again, the um, difference for me is that we came across a lot more uh, hatchery fish than we saw yesterday. So we uh, got uh, a couple for me after getting 10 fish for the customers. Uh, and yeah, it was fun. Uh, I think we only threw back two wild ones today. So the hatchery ratio was um, exceptionally good for me. Other folks had talked about quite a few more wild fish, which was the case that I experienced yesterday. So just be aware that you may have to handle quite a few um, wild coho before you get your hatchery fish. Um, but there's plenty here. You know, we had lots of bites today, had plenty of fish fall off. Um, I did improve my strength to hook ratio um, through uh, some strategies that I'll picture here. Uh, spin fish were working well, and I'm, I've just been putting those hooks uh, quite a ways back from the spin fish or the spinner itself, putting a few few extra beads between the hardware, uh, whether it's a spin fish or a spinner and the hook itself and using the size five aught barbless Maruto hooks. Um, really strong hook, really sharp hook. Um, got a nice long shank and a, a different angle to it that seems to have uh, dramatically improved my strike to hook ratio. So I'll show you a picture of those. And um, yeah, the, nothing changed as far as strategy. There was a ton of fish on the Washington side of Desmona Sands that uh, first thing in this morning. Um, those fish are not biting well. Uh, that's not always been the case. And maybe as we get closer to morning high tides, that'll change over there. But boy, that Washington side, uh, 20 to 30 foot of um, this uh, north side of Desdemona Sands, you know, from like the tunnel down to marker one is just laden with coho. I believe they're mostly coho. Um, but they're just not biting. Uh, so again, that may change in a few days when we have a high tide closer to morning hours. The tides are waning. So, um, you know, even though we've been doing nine o'clock starts um, and fishing and peak ebb, we're still doing a nice, perfect, about three miles an hour downstream. So that's been convenient uh, and will continue to be the same here for the next several days. So unfortunately, again, those fish aren't biting well, but as it got closer to the low slack, uh, we were kind of zigzagging between buoy 14 and marker one and buoy 12 and buoy 10. And it was a good bite um, fishing uh, anywhere from 50 on the line counters to 21 up in the bow. Um, they were biting at all depths and they were biting all the gear. I don't typically like to mix gear types. Spinners and spin fish are okay for hardware, but throwing in live bait, not live bait, but fresh bait, fresh uh, whole rigged anchovies. Um, I'm always afraid that those fresh baits are going to outproduce as they often have the hardware or plastic wear, but that was not the case today. I was grateful to witness hmm man maybe I should be taking a nap right now <laughs> uh, that's with a full night's sleep so um, I got this one the spinner blade that uh, continues to work exceptionally well I've shown photos of it before I call it the celebrate diversity blade Um, it's been a good one and it was again today um, <laughs> we did lose a lot of fish on it uh, and even though I, I I don't actually believe it's ever the customers fault unless they let a lot of slack in the line this guy um, lost a lot of fish on the bow rod 
Larry Healy. If you ever come across that guy, stay away from him. Um, nothing but trouble. And his brother Joe, not much better. Hope you're watching. So, yeah, low slack bite, first part of incoming. Um, was really good fishing. Uh, we started getting pushed back when the first uh, rip came through. That's nothing new. Got pushed back to 12. And uh, normally I just pick up the gear and head back to the buoy 10 deadline. Uh, but I just, we were, had, we were so close to our limit, I just stuck with it and we got pushed back to 12, but we were still getting the occasional fish and we buttoned up with uh, hatchery fish number 12 about two o'clock today. Um, and uh, called it macaroni. So we kept a couple small ones, but there were also a couple of large ones and most of the medium seven, seven to seven and a half, eight pounders. Good quality fish. Um, you know, some of these coho did not have, uh, still did not have very developed eggs. So um, it makes me think there's gonna be, you know, a lot more fish coming in here in the near future. So I still haven't uh, witnessed what I'd call the mother load. You know, if those, fish that were biting on that outgoing tide uh, if they were biting I'd say yes the, the mother load is in and according to the graph the mother load is in but um, I've seen this fishery enough times to where you get your 10 or 12 or 14 fish limit in uh, an hour and a half or so and I haven't seen that but I get the feeling we're gonna have that especially um, in a couple of days from now when we we do have a high tide at at daybreak and able to take advantage of those fish hopefully they bite quite a bit better because every morning last couple mornings they've been there in in spades so we'll see if that continues so yeah same thing last part outgoing first part incoming is producing um great action for coho again most folks are, are releasing a lot of fish and uh hopefully get a, a good batch of hatchery fish along with that and we just got lucky today and got by far uh, the majority of hatchery fish, so we're very, very pleased with that. Um, tomorrow's tides are are not going to differ much, but they are continuing to soften. So I'm still going to do a nine o'clock start and bank on that low tide bite and that first part of incoming um, to produce uh, the results I'm hoping for. So. Uh, and those that decide to fish late in the afternoon, there are fish that are falling in the shallows. Um, had one friend fish um, the Desdemona Tongue, which is basically in the middle of the river from buoy 20, green buoy 21 up to the Desdemona light marker, 15, 14 foot of water doing upstream troll. We're gonna have uh, that softening incoming tide. So it's really, a good time to be doing that troll on the Desdemona tongue. The softer incoming seem to produce the best. Um, and so um, I would think that that's going to be a better bet in the coming days over the weekend. So, um, and then high tide, I mentioned the other day that we were getting fish on the south side of the humps there on the Washington show on the Washington side above the bridge. Um, we typically troll that 22 to 24 foot stuff just out of blind channel there, the deep water out of blind channel. But I got up on the shallower stuff and trolled 14, 15, 16 foot of water more in the middle of the river, uh, south of the humps. And there was, there was good numbers of fish in there as well at, at uh, high tide. You want to troll that close to high tide, just like you do the humps over there on the Washington side. So lots of fish in the river. Hopefully it stays that way. Um, I don't think we'll lose a lot of fish upriver on these small tides. Um, and with no rain in sight, it should continue to be a very productive buoy 10 fishery. So if you get out, stay safe, have a good time.